ಓಂ ಸದಾ ಶಿವ ಸಮಾರಂಭಾ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯಮಾ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರಾ ಓಂ ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೌಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾ ವಿದ್ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಓಂ ಸೊ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಲುಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಟ್ ದಿ ಸೃಷ್ಟಿ ಪ್ರಕ್ರಿಯ ಹೌ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ ದ ಜಗತ್ ಕಾರಣ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ಈಸ್ ಜಗತ್ ಕಾರಣ ಓನ್ಲಿ ವೆನ್ ವಿ ಲುಕ್ ಅಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಕಂಡೀಷನಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟರ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಮಾಯಾ the maya itself we saw has avarna shakti and vikshepa shakti like that there are two different shaktis are there because the avarna is the one which covers and the vikshepa is the one which projects so unless there is a covering of the truth the appearance which is not really the truth cannot be projected that's why we talk about two different shaktis that's how you also see even a snake on the rope etc correct rope snake itself is an appearance but that appearance is possible because the rope itself is covered the knowledge of rope is not there correct it is covered then that covering after that covering the projection of snake happens and that's what you see now to make this point actually this author is quoting vakya sudha vakya sudha is actually another name for drigdishya drigdrishya viveka so vikshepa shaktir linga adi brahmandam brahmandantam jagat srije so the vikshepa shakti only starting from your own sukshma sharira linga linga sharira lingaadi to the brahmanda from the pinda to the anda <laughs> from the microcosm to the macrocosm everything is created by this power of projection of brahman so you can even modern scientists talk about big bang and all that so big bang is some kind of a projection correct everything was initially in a singularity they say that's what we say ekameva advitiyam i think <laughs> there was only one without a second one only one without a second and from then from there only everything has been projected here but the projection itself is only an appearance it doesn't change the essential nature of the one reality which is there that is the important thing we have to always keep in mind now here you see continuing this the author here sadananda is making it very clear to us shakti dvaya dvayavat agnana upahitam chaitanyam svapradhanataya nimittam sva upadhi pradhanataya upadanancha bhavati so whenever we talk about brahman as jagat karanam or ishvara we say correct ishvara or bhagavan any of these words you can use people use words like sagunam brahma ishvara bhagavan all these things are synonymous only for us this bhagavan is abhinna nimitta upadana karanam this is the very important thing our vedic vision is the only vision which talks about the karanam as being both nimitta and upadhana the other theologies also talk about a creator but the creator is only nimitta karana for them because god in heaven or god sitting somewhere else created this world but the world is <laughs> the world is not a manifestation of bhagavan for them it is simply the creation which is separate from that bhagavan that's why you have to go there 
wherever bhagwan is you have to go there you have to they are doing tourism promotion like that my guruji used to say it's all only tourism promotion you have to go wherever bhagwan is that is the problem in fact if you have to go somewhere means it is not there already <laughs> but still they call eternal heaven and all that which is all illogical correct eternal cannot start in time eternal means it should already be there so even something which starts can never be eternal so even if you go to swarga you have to come back that is very clear even in bhagavad gita even in the veda everywhere it is said that chine punye martya lokam vishanti like that once the punya is gone you have to come back so you can gain whatever punya and go to whichever loka after the punya is gone you have to come back now that is proper understanding this eternal heaven is really illogical it cannot be even accepted so we do not say talk about uh, eternal heaven for us ishwara or bhagwan is both nimitta and upadana karanam in fact this vision is the basis for our entire culture unless you understand this vision our religious culture will not make any sense to you because only by saying ishwara is both nimitta and upadana karanam we can say that ishwara pervades everything correct all pervading ishwara and also in fact creation itself is only a manifestation for us bhagwan manifests as this world and whatever is manifest can again become unmanifest can go into a potential state so whether it is a manifest undifferentiated undif- world or unmanifest undifferentiated potential world everything is in bhagwan only nothing is separate from bhagwan bhagwan manifests as all the order which is there here whether it is the physical order chemical order biological order psychological order physiological order any order because all the laws themselves are uh, pointing to a certain order correct if the laws themselves keep changing the gravitation keeps changing every day the charles law boyle's law these are all basic things correct in physics or the way chemical bonding happens changes keeps on changing every day let us say nothing will be there as we know correct the world itself cannot be there with any equilibrium or any stability there won't be any stability it will all be only chaos that's why we say that this dharma bhagwan is manifest as dharma we say dharma itself is the one which supports or which keeps the entire order in place dharati iti dharma correct and bhagwan is the one who is manifest as the dharma so all the laws are also manifestations of bhagwan for us whether it is scientific laws or even the moral order which we talk about where we talk about the karma having both adrishta and dritta phala so all these things are manifestations of bhagwan only for us and only when you understand it like that this whole our own culture or our way of life everything becomes meaningful because then all forms are really bhagwan's forms understand that so those who say that bhagwan is formless again that is a problem then what about all the forms forms and all will become not bhagwan in that case then again bhagwan will become limited so you cannot claim at the same time bhagwan is limitless and then also claim that the forms uh, are not part of bhagwan and all worship can be there only in forms understand the formless cannot be worshiped the nature of bhagwan can be formless it is something to be understood even giving a name is a form correct as soon as you give a name the form has come therefore worship is possible an altar is possible only if we have a form and therefore there is no problem with any form in which we can invoke bhagwan we can worship that form 
for us there is no problem with that so these are all some important things and all these things follow from this understanding that that ishwara or brahman from its own standpoint swapradhanataya the that too but we have to understand brahman which is conditioned by this maya or agnana agnana here is really maya only because at the samashti level at the totality this agnana is nothing but maya which is having two shaktis avarana and vikshepa shakti so the chaitanya or brahman which is conditioned upahitam means conditioned conditioned by this maya which has these two shaktis that chaitanyam from its own standpoint is called the nimitta nimitta means the intelligent cause you can say since intelligence can only reside in a conscious entity we say that from its own standpoint because there is only one consciousness so swapradhanataya the conditioned brahman or conditioned consciousness from its own standpoint with reference to the world of course is the intelligent cause of the world and swa upadhi pradhanataya from the standpoint of maya or the conditioning factor it is the material cause the material cause are the parinami upadana karanam we say maya only modifies or that is the one which transforms itself into this variegated world brahman does not undergo any change that's why it is called vivarta upadana also even if you talk about brahman as the as the basis for everything correct because even maya finally has only dependent existence it depends on brahman for its very existence so even if you consider brahman itself as the upadana even then we say it is vivarta upadana because the change does not happen in brahman brahman being brahman alone appears as this world like gold being gold only appears as different jewelry correct right? this is a very important analogy for us the substance does not undergo any change it does not lose its very nature without losing its nature it appears as different names and forms that is what we say are karya or effect and all that okay the cause remains as cause only it never loses its very nature being the same substance only it appears with different names and forms all these names and forms you can call any name bangle chain ear ring nose ring finger ring correct so many things are there all this jewelry are nothing but gold the gold never loses its very nature that is called vivarta upadana karana vivarta means it, it does not change it remains as it is so in in uh, more technically in sanskritam we say swarupa aparityagena rupantara apattihi like this it is said swarupa aparityagena means what without giving up its own swarupa without giving up its very nature its nature is the same but rupantara apatti he it takes up another form and along with the form of course name also so it only takes up names and forms different names and forms without losing its very nature okay that is what is this so brahman alone is the karanam when you look at it as nimitta karanam or intelligent cause it is from its own standpoint when you look at it as the upadana karana it is from the standpoint of the conditioning factor here only we also have this father mother anything see the father is the nimitta karanam mother is the upadana karanam for us and in fact both of them are one and the same that's why we have ardhanarishwara also the ardhanarishwara is only pointing out that the abhinna nimitta upadanatvam whatever is revealed by the shruti the veda that only we are seeing in the form of ardhanari 
ஆர் இவன் காளிதாசா சேஸ் வாகர்த்தா விவ சம்பிருக்தவ் வாகர்த்த பிரதிபத்தையே ஜெகதஃப் பித்தரவ் வந்தே ஜெகதஃப் பித்தரவ் த பேரண்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் திஸ் ஜெகத் த வேர்ல்டு தே ஆர் ஒன் லைக் இவன் த வேர்ல்டு அண்ட் இட்ஸ் மீனிங் தட் இஸ் த அனாலஜி ஹி கிவ்ஸ் இட்ஸ் த ஒன் அண்ட் த சேம் டிபெண்ட்ஸ் ஆன் ஃப்ரம் விச் ஸ்டாண்ட் பாயிண்ட் யூ ஆர் லுக்கிங் அட் இட் so we have no problem with whether you are worshiping the father or the mother some theologies have a problem there also they say god is only father in heaven in fact my guruji used to joke if father in heaven and mother is not there means then father becomes widower so all these funny connotations will come implications will come so i don't know how they handle it anyway we have no problem this vision is something every vaidika has to internalize that bhagwan is manifest as everything means it includes your own body mind sense complex also that you should not leave out okay your very body mind sense complex also is a manifestation of the same bhagwan it is something divine for us and that's why even whatever you do to your own body is also you have to do it worshipfully even snanam you take means it is like you are doing abhisheka to the bhagwan when you are eating you are offering to the jataragni in fact in the bhagavad gita bhagwan says i am the one who is sitting there as this agni correct aham vaishwanaro bhutva praninam deham ashritah that is so true correct because we cannot even digest our own food really speaking we don't have that power bhagwan only is there sitting there and digesting our food in fact most of the world has digestive problems most health problems start with digestion i think if your digestion is proper you will have arogya also okay there cannot be any disease then health will be there anyway so even eating food whatever you do everything we can do it with the attitude of worship you can do it as a devotee because everything is a manifestation of bhagwan only so that's what we have to understand so everything you can do it with an attitude that you are doing something very sacred eating eating is not just for your own taste and all that you are actually offering the food to bhagwan who is sitting there in fact if you look at it that way i think even you will have certain discipline in what you eat because you cannot offer everything to bhagwan correct or some junk food and all to bhagwan you don't offer junk food as naivedyam when you actually do the puja correct but the same attitude can you take it even when you are eating food that is the thing we have to uh, we have to have a certain change in attitude i think so that change in attitude will make all the difference it's all only cognitive the entire shastra if you study properly and understand there will be a certain cognitive change which will actually then result in you becoming a yogi yogi means what buddhi yoga only bhagwan says the word buddhi yoga is used by bhagwan in bhagavad gita second chapter and buddhi yoga means it is basically a yoga of attitude correct right? buddhi means it's all cognition and your attitudes is what matters so this by internalizing this vision alone you can have the right attitude towards everything life in general anyway so the okay how can you say the same vastu is both nimitta and upadana karanam means don't worry <laughs> we have an analogy even in the world correct the spider yatha luta tantu karyam prati svapradhanataya nimittam sva sharira pradhanataya upadanam cha bhavati so the spider is both the material and the intelligent cause for the yarn which it is spinning correct it really doesn't spin basically it oozes out some kind of a uh, some kind of a wax or whatever correct liquid which then becomes that yarn 
so it can produce its own yarn and then based on that it is only creating the web and when it is creating that yarn it can also take it back into itself if it is threatened or something it will just roll it and put it back into its own mouth again it it can unroll and all that so the spider is a very good example in fact this is coming from the mundaka upanishad yathorna nabhi srijate grinna grinnate cha like that we have the mundaka shruti uh, which is very clear correct the mundaka shruti talks about urna nabhi luta and all are synonyms only it is all spider but in fact the mundaka shruti has two more analogies also yatha prithivya moshadeha sambhavati yatha satah purushat kesha lomani tatha aksharat sambhavati ha vishvam so this entire world comes from this akshara aksharam brahma okay now why it is giving three analogies if you see there because we say the world is jadam correct how can the world which is jada come from a conscious being which is brahman or aksharam means that's why it is giving other analogies also like even the kesha loma your hair etc and loma roma loma is the body here all these things are actually jada but it comes from a sentient body correct so there is no rule that a jada jada vastu cannot come from sentient or even the earth is jada we say but from that plants are coming oshadis which are all sentient so both way it is possible therefore you cannot have any objection saying that how did this world come from this chaitanyam brahma and all that it's all possible so it gives different analogies to establish that brahman is the or aksharam brahma is the jagat karanam that is the mundaka shruti is quoted here it's not explicitly quoted but that's what is referred to here okay so the spider itself from its own standpoint is the intelligent cause and from the and its body from the standpoint of its body it is the material cause also for the for whatever yarn it is able to produce then what tamah pradhana vikshepa it should be here i think this is spelling mistake tamah pradhana vikshepa shakti mad agnana upahita chaitanyat akasha ha okay then akasha dvayu vayo ragni agne rapa ha adhya prithivi this is all taitriya shuti cha utpadyate then he quotes that explicitly etasmad atmana ha akasha sambhuta ha ityadi shrute he so now the srishti krama we have to talk about we have our own five elemental model of creation we talk about akasha vayu agni apaha prithivi so akasha can be taken as space or some people translated as ether and all that the word ether was used even in the <laughs> physics and all that 100 years back i think nowadays uh, nobody talks about ether because the ether they talked about i think because they thought the electromagnetic waves require a medium to actually propagate but then later on they said there is no need of any me- medium and all that even in vacuum the electromagnetic waves can travel so even physics and scientists also have given up the word ether they simply use space and i think even vedantins now we have also moved along with that so akasha is space in fact that that's the correct meaning because bhashikara in the taitriya bhashya he, he says avakasha pradatr akasha so that which accommodates that which gives space is akasha so space is the right translation i think so the akasha and then vayu is all gas okay then agni is all energy apaha is all liquid then prithivi is all solid like this we can take so we are just taking it 
in this five elemental model. Now, this is very clearly presented in the Taitriya Shruti. In the Chandogya also, there is a Shrishti Prakriya, but it directly starts from Agni only. The Akasha and whatever is visible to you with eyes, it starts from there. Akasha Vayu is not mentioned. But the Chandogya Shruti talks about something called Trivrit Karanam, means those three mix with each other and uh, the Srishti is there. Okay. Then what we do is <laughs> to have a proper understanding, we extrapolate that Trivrit Karanam to all the five elemental model also. And we talk about a Panchi Karanam, which will come later. In fact, this author will be talking about how this whole city has come about by the mixing up of all these five elements only. The whole thing is there. So like this, uh, we will see that. But interestingly, he talks about a Tamaf Pradhana. Okay. Means the Karana is having uh, a predominance of tamas. So we do talk about the three gunas. Okay, guna here should not be translated as qualities. Understand that uh, there are many meanings for the word guna. When we are talking about guna in the context of sattva, rajas and tamas, they are not qualities. They, you can you can you can consider them as a constituent rather than as quality. They are the constituents of prakriti or maya. Okay, the prakriti is constituted with the three gunas, three fold or three types of constituents are there. Like even we say the atom has proton, neutron, electron. Correct. They are three constituents of the atom when we look at the atomic theory. Like this, the prakriti is constituent. It is, the, it is constituted of all these three constituents. So the guna should not be here translated as a quality. They are Actually, it is a noun here. Okay, the guna is really a, it's a substance or it's a constituent. So there is a tamas. There is Rajas, there is Sattva, like this, three constituents are there. And uh, the Tamas only, when it is predominant, only all this Akashadi, this, this Srishti happens. That is because and <laughs> Tamas Pradhana has to be there. Then only the Avarana will be there. Understand that. And after the Avarna, only the Vikshepa or the projection happens. So the entire Srishti is nothing but a projection. Therefore, when the projection initially happens, there is a Tamak Pradhana is there. That's what is pointed out here. So when the, when the reality has been covered and Tamas is predominant, then only this projection happens. And the, in the projection, the first thing is space itself is projected. Akasha. Correct? And projected, and the projection happens from where? This Vikshepa Shakti Mat Agnana Upahita Chaitanyat. From the Chaitanya or consciousness, which itself is conditioned by this Agnanam or Maya, which itself is having this power to project. Okay? And when the tamas is predominant in that maya, okay, tamas, tamas predominant maya, which is having the projection power, when that conditions this consciousness, from that consciousness, this space has been projected or it has issued forth or evolved, whatever you can say. Then akashad vayuhu. Okay, even when we say Akashad Vayu, there is a problem then. There is even a discussion. Bhashyakara also discusses, I think, in the Taitriya Bhashya. That means Vayu, the Karana is Akasha, means then is Brahman not the Karana? There is a question like that he raises. Then he answers, no, no. <laughs> Brahman in the form of Akasha, 
is the cause for vayu correct therefore brahman is still the jagat karana otherwise if you say vayu the cause is akasha only then what happens to brahman brahman will not become jagat karana anymore like that there can be a problem so bashakara explains that he says no no brahman alone which is now appearing as akasha from that uh, brahman akasha brahman vayu is projected then brahman akasha vayu projects agni brahman akasha vayu agni from that apaha brahman akasha vayu agni apaha from that water or whatever liquids prithvi sorry from that prithvi which is earth or solid like this we have to understand everything is is uh, from brahman alone and here also there is a certain gradation is there we say the solid is the most gross form correct physically also solid form is a grass form liquid is subtler gas is even more subtler energy also is subtle okay in between energy comes because fire we will take it as energy and then the space is the subtlest okay so there is like that from the uh, from uh, sthula to sukshma space is the sukshma and prithvi is sthula like this there is a certain gradation even there that also we have to understand so this by quoting the taitriya shruti so this srishti prakriya is given here the 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 way everything got projected okay then what teshu jadhya adhikyat okay jadhya adhikya darshanat tamah pradhanyam tat karanasya so this is what i already explained he is explicitly saying here see this projected five elements are all jada they are not chetana correct they are not sentient so they have adhikyam means what adhikasya bhava is adhikyam again predominance adhikyam means predominance you can say so they are all only jada or insentient predominantly insentient the projected five elements are all predominantly uh, insentient that's how we see that correct adikya darshanat tamah pradhanyam tat karanasya so from the effect now we are inferring or doing arthapatti we are inferring that the karana must have been also tamah pradhana that's why he already said here tamah pradhana that he is explaining here why he said tamah pradhana there because the created five elements are all jada means that means the the cause also should reflect that and tamas is the one from which the jada prapancha has come then rajas is the one which is produced all this prana we say prana also is one way everything other than chaitanyam is jada only but prana is still having life correct and sattva only the mind and all is there because sattva from a relative standpoint we say it is aware it is conscious and all that because the same consciousness manifests and sentiency is there so that is why here when we talk about the five elements by themselves they are all insentient therefore they must have come from a tamah pradhana karana the predominance of tamas is there in the maya from there only the five elements which are insentient have come about and then once the five elements are there tadanim sattva rajas tamansi karana guna prakramena teshu akashadishu utpadyante so but still we have to now talk about the sentient beings also in the srishti correct the srishti has both sentient and insentient beings initially when all these five elements came they were all insentient only because 
they came as jada vastu and they have come from tamaf pradhana karana but then from there we have to also have all these sentient beings also we have to account for in the creation so therefore he says once these five elements were born then in them the all the gunas other gunas also started manifesting sattva rajas tamas tamas all three from the karana itself all these three gunas they started manifesting karana guna prakramane means again the concept here is that whatever is there in the karya has to come from the karana therefore the karana maya or prakriti is trigunatmika it is made up of the three gunas therefore the three gunas manifest in the karya also and it first manifest in the akasha it is said here because akasha is the subtlest even in the shrishti krama in the in the flow correct akasha comes first so the three gunas they manifested in the akasha teshu akasha dishu of course akasha adi padat it manifested in all the vast all the five elements okay akasha vayu agni apaha prithivi in all of them the three gunas are there and then now we will say that we will talk about the panchi karana that is the next step so et etani eva sukshma bhutani tanmatrani apanchi kritani cha uchyante so okay initially the five elements are there and in them the three gunas also are now manifest okay but they are all called apanchi kritani or tanmatrani means what they are themselves alone they are pure uh, element uh, uncontaminated element or whatever you can say okay so tanmatra means tat matra means it is only itself it's not mixed with anything else unmixed and the panchi karana means the five things mixing together is called panchi karana the panchi karana has not yet take take uh, or it has not taken place they are there as themselves okay so these five etani eva sukshma bhutani they are all subtle elements and they are themselves means they are as uh, themselves without getting mixed up with the others that's how it is to start with then what etebhy sukshma sharirani stula bhutani cha utpadyante so from these five apanchi krita tanmatra uh, bhutas maha bhutas only all the physical bodies and all the subtle bodies they are born okay sukshma sharira and stula sharira all of them are born from these five elements and how it is born that process is where the mixing up takes place that will be talked about now that is the panchi karana so sukshma sharirani sapta dasha avayavani linga sharirani so the sukshma sharira first the sukshma sharira is talked about sukshma sharira is having 17 avayavas or angas or parts you can say okay sapta dasha avayavani what are this those he will also list it out it is also the sukshma sharira is also called a linga sharira because it indicates whether the jiva is there or not so indicatory body also the linga means is basically an indication so here the sukshma sharira another word for this is the linga sharira and what as what are those 17 things means he is now giving avayavastu so the parts which make up this subtle body is what jnanendriya panchakam there are five sense organs then buddhi intellect manas mind then karmendriya panchakam five organs of action are there correct starting from speech vak pani pada like that the list is there the organ of speech hands legs all these things 
then vayu panchakam the five pranas also we talk about pancha prana okay again this counting and all can be different okay this he is now counting 17 sometimes if you count this mind itself is counted as two here buddhi and manas but chittam ahankara and all also you can add then it will become 19 so here he is counting it as 17 <clears throat> all these things make up the sukshma sharira these are the avayavas and he lists the all these jnana indriyas and all that the organ of senses uh, sense organs we know what are they jnana indriyani kshotra tvak chakshur jihwa granakhyani shrotra means eyes tvak means sense of touch chakshu or eyes jihwa is tongue or taste organ of taste grana is the nose or organ of smell so these five they are in the form of these five these are the sense organs etani aakashadinam satvikaamshebhy vyastebhy so these things they manifested from the satvika aspect of the aakasha okay prithak prithak kramena utpadyante in fact we connect each organ with each element so the shrotra is from the aakasha that's why shabda gunakam aakasha we say traditionally the aakasha has the guna of shabda then vayu is grana like this you can link each sense organ with one type of sorry vayu is not uh, grana Va- uh, the prithivi only is gandhavati prithivi vayu is actually sense of touch we say because uh, the vayu can only be felt it cannot be seen agni is for eyes and then we have taste is in water we say smell is there in prithivi so like this the five sense objects and the sense organs are connected to the five mahabhutas so why do we have five elements means it's all connected to our sense organs and the sense objects also understand that that's how we even encounter the world right without the sense objects uh, we cannot even know the world so how do we know the world through that only the whole world is explained the srishti is explained here so that's what we can see so the satvika amsha of these five elements only separately one by one like i explained to you they are all connected to these different sense organs the sense organs themselves manifested from that only as vyastebhya uh, means they are individuals individually each and every organ they have come from the satvika amsha of these pancha mahabhutas akash adi padat akash etc okay from this then buddhir nama what is buddhi nishayatmika antakarana vritti <laughs> so buddhi means typically we say that buddhi is the one which discriminates and ascertains this is this correct nischayatmika mind is sankalpa vikalpatmika we say that also he says next mano nama sankalpa vikalpatmika antakarana vritti hi so the antakarana means mind vritti means you can say it is a state a particular state of mind where you have ascertained that this is this that discriminatory state of mind where you have ascertained something with clarity is the buddhi and where you are still thinking about different options where also the emotional mind basically the state of mind where emotions and different thoughts are there that is the manas we say so the the antakarana only is looked upon as both buddhi and manas depending on its state of course the memory and the sense of i also we can uh, it is not considered here but we'll see that then anayoho eva chitta ahankara yoho antarbhava he says <laughs> that's what i told you so he did not enumerate the memory and ahankara separately he says 
they are all within this buddhi and manas only the chitta and ahankara also has to be uh, understood or counted within them then he explains what is chitta and ahankara also anusandhanatmika antakarana vritti hi chittam so the the memory is something which you recollect correct anusandhana so the the state of mind where there is a certain recollection of something which you have already experienced that is memory or chitta and abhimanatmika antakarana vritti hi is ahankara and a state of mind where you claim ownership correct me mine all that the sense of i and sense of mine that is the abhimana the state of mind where i and mine are uh, are recognized we can say that is ahankara so like this all the four have been talked about here ete punaha akashaadi गत सात्विकांशेभ्य मिलितेभ्य उत्पद्य सो दि इंपारटेंट थिंग हियर इज ईच एंड एवरी से आर्गन इज फ्रम वन एलिमेंट बट दिस बुद्धि मन चिता एंड अहंकार आलो आर् फ्रम द सात्विकांश आफ दि पंच भूता ओनली बट दे आर् मिक्स आल द फाइव आर् मिक्स टूगेदर and then forms the mind that's why he says satvikamshebhya militebhya they are all mixed because mind is from all the five pancha mahabhutas that is our understanding but from the satvikamsha or the satvika part of the five mahabhutas mixed together and form this manobuddhi ahankara chitta like this they are created then further the srishti prakriya goes we will see that next week om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva avashishyate om shanti 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 hi hari hi om shri gurubhyo namaha hari hi om